developments made in laboratory testing of structures have been crucial in improving the natural hazard resilience of our infrastructure. The two primary test methods that have been used have been the quasi-static cyclic method and the shake table testing method. The quasi-static cyclic method is very good for obtaining the static and static behavior of structures. However, it's not really meant for dynamic and rate-dependent type behaviors. The shake table testing method is also very realistic and accurate, but the problem is that big shake tables are expensive to build and operate, and the scaling that is necessary to satisfy the similitude loss for some of the smaller shake tables is a very complex task. In the Newark Laboratory at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, we have developed a multi-axial real-time hybrid simulation framework as an alternative to some of the existing test methods. The multi-axial testing is meant for capturing three-dimensional strength envelopes and some of the more sophisticated system level interactions. Real-time testing is meant to capture real-world speeds and some of the more dynamic and rate-dependent type behaviors that are seen in some of the materials. And uh, hybrid simulation is a uh, testing methodology that involves breaking down a full structure into numerical and physical subcomponents. Now, let's imagine an illustrative example including a multi span curved bridge structure subjected to an earthquake motion where the curved deck and one of the piers are numerically modeled while two other piers are tested physically. At each time step, a ground motion excites our numerical model. The Cartesian target boundary point with the physical specimen are calculated and sent through a series of kinematic transformations and actuator compensation algorithms to obtain an actuator control signal which is executed by load and boundary condition boxes. For the physical realization of the multi-axial real-time hybrid simulation, we are going to use the load and boundary condition boxes that we have available here at the University of Illinois. Each of these LDCBs uh, uses hydraulic oil, six servo valves, six actuators, and six load cells which are in line with the actuators. And we also have six external potentiometers which are effectively displacement transducers. So an LVCB is connected to a physical specimen and pretty much serves to impose the boundary conditions that are calculated by our numerical model. The actual merit of this methodology is that dynamic and rate-dependent behavior of materials, complex three-dimensional system level interactions, and realistic nonlinearities and cost burdens of experimentation are accounted for.